This is the Just Steph Show, and I'm your host, Steph Palermo, your Italian Boston girl who's an empath, healer, and all-around seeker of wisdom. Tune in weekly for advice on how to live your best life at work, home, or play so you can feel groovy every day. This is the Just Steph Show. I'm your host, Steph Palermo, your Sicilian Scorpio girl who takes you by the hand and drags you to have an amazing life. And uh, we are second lifers. We're empty nesters, newly single, and those starting over H3. Your healthy, happy hip years are just beginning. And in the studio today, I have, well, we're kind of not in the studio, but we're, yeah. we, we will pretend we're in the studio. Um, I have Father Darren Merlino. Hey. Welcome. Hi. Hey, thank you. Thank you. you. It looks like you're, um, you know, at the Fountain of Trevi. <laughs> I, uh, who says I'm not? I know, right? So, well, yeah, you could be like um, Padre Pio. You could bilocate. Right, that's right. Actually, well, so, I'm having gelato right now with Padre. <laughs> there you go. So, you know what? Um, I usually have my, my, I'm usually facing the other way, and you can see, like, my china cabinet with all my grandmother's china and stuff. Right. And I decided to do this today. The Last Supper. Oh, that, you're so <laughs> sweet for doing that just for me. In fact, I said Mass earlier today, so, yeah. Here we go. Happy Lent. Happy Lent. Happy Lent. Yes. Happy Lent to you. Um, thank you. So let me um, let me read this for our viewers. Please. So Father Darren is a Claritian missionary priest living in LA. God bless him. His ordination in the year of 2000 was the first ever in the US history to be broadcast live via the internet. Hmm. There's your claim to fame. He's been an award-winning high school teacher, Mary Star of the Sea in San Pedro, California, an associate pastor and youth minister, and for five years, the highly successful pastor at Sacred Heart Church in Prescott, Arizona. Beautiful, beautiful place, Prescott. Among his many accomplishments at Sacred Heart was spearheading the recent $3.2 million renovation and redesign of the 50-year-old church building, which reopened on schedule in November 20. 2018. So you are very organized as well. Um, yeah. Now, Father Merlino is following his original calling to the priesthood, evangelizing through the media as co-founder of Catholic Media Missionaries, the host of the conversation series, Hound of Heaven, and author of his debut book. Here it is, Yay. right here. Right here. 30 Days Unplugged, how a Catholic priest turned off his iPhone and took a call from God. Wow, that's a mouthful. Yes, say that five times fast. I know, right? So, okay, well, I definitely want to talk about the book. I, I want you, I didn't read it all, but I, I kind of feel like um, this is one of those books where you could just sort of, if you wanted to um, meditate, you could just pick one little area. Yes. And, and pull it up and, and kind of like I like sometimes if I was gonna do um, look at the the at scripture I would do Bible roulette and so <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, you know I want to I want to definitely bring this to all audiences because not just Catholics because uh, unplugging is so un important for our, yeah. for our for our own growth right as people so but let's talk about you tell me why did you become a priest. Well, it's partially mentioned in my book, but you know, I was—I had no desire as to be a priest. Um, I was planning on working in, in television or radio in the LA area back in the '80s. Mm -hmm. um, and back so January 6, 1987, my mom and I were in the kitchen praying, which is, as you know, the, the holy sanctuary of any Italian household is the kitchen. Um, it's more the most important room in the in the house. And so, she had mentioned, you know, I think the Lord's calling you to be a priest, and I just felt the Holy Spirit just flood me to the point where I actually physically suffocated. I'd never had that experience before to the point where I was like, oh my gosh. And so um, we asked, we, we, I just felt the Holy Spirit's presence stronger than any I've, nothing's compared since. And so uh, from 87 to, 90, uh, to August of 88, I just discerned where God wanted me to go to be a priest, uh, entered a religious order and left there. But yeah, the Holy Spirit, I, I had the funniest thing about the whole thing is um, I felt called to be a priest and I called this one religious order in Alabama and that priest goes, you know, you need to study St. Thomas Aquinas to mystic philosophy. And I didn't know what the heck he was talking about because I was clueless at the time. Two weeks later, a week later, a friend calls up and says, Darren, you won't believe this. I had a, I had a dream and you were in it. And Thomas Aquinas, 
And I freaked out. I was like, I didn't tell my friend I was called to be a priest. And I didn't tell him about that conversation I had at all. And that really freaked me out. I said, well, maybe I am called to be a priest. And so I took it more seriously. And that's the, that's like the reader's reader's digest version of the whole thing. But that's right. right. Well, that's awesome. Uh, so I know those things happen when you uh, and, and, and even uh, in sort of a secular space, when as soon as you right. turn your uh, gaze towards um, making changes in your life and wanting mm. to be open to that, the universe, God, spirit, you'll start getting you'll people will start saying stuff to you. It, you'll just yes. open up. And so I, I just want to clarify. So the Claritians, that's St. Clair. The friend no, no, no. It's Saint Anthony Mary Claret is a is oh. a Spanish uh, bishop oh, who okay. lived in Spain. See, all right. <laughs> yeah, I think it was Saint Clair from. Yeah, you know, Saint I get that a lot. You're not okay. alone. All right, so it was you know because I was like, is that Saint Clair the you know the the friend of Saint? Yeah, Francis, you think right? it would? No, yeah, it's not, not at all, okay. not even close. Okay. So okay, sorry. All right. No, that's good. Right, that's good that you asked. Yeah, because but I have had that many times. Oh, Claire, uh, your Claire followers, right? No, no, no. Uh, Saint Anthony Mary Claret was a, 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 a bishop, five foot tall, with high heels on a hill. I mean, that guy was really short, exactly. which means that I'm six four. So there's he was a great saint, and I'm six four. So there's not too much hope for me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be short. Well, you have to be short to be uh, be holy. Is that what yes? It is? I guess apparently, <laughs> apparently, except for Saint Louis de Montfort, apparently was six four. So there is some hope for me. There you go. There you go. So. Uh, you know, I uh, I looked at some of the pictures in the book. I they're uh, really awesome. My favorite one though is um, and I'm I curious, know, yeah. I'm kind of skip, skipping around. No, my favorite one is the one with um Jesus in the um in the studio with the microphone. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, one of not one of my students, but uh, he is a student from Mary Star High School, um, who oh. now is over at I think you Mary. His his aunt was my boss. She was the she's the principal there, wow. and uh, yeah, his father is a really good friend of mine, and so he told me, oh yeah, my son's an artist. I was like, oh, let me see some of his stuff. And I go, oh, this guy's good. So, yeah. Oh yeah, here it is. Here it is. Yeah, this you is know, really I, cool. I love the microphone. So it's my favorite thing. So this is like. Yes, in fact. If the one of the reviews I sent you that he used that as his, his picture for his review of my book, uh, John Person uh, Pearson, yeah, wow, okay. that that was a great that was a great meditation. Yeah, I don't to be honest with you. Yeah, I don't know how to explain this. I don't know what kind of questions you're gonna have, so I don't want to break your your train of thought. So I'll I'll keep going with you. I'll follow well, your lead. So essentially, you decide you you were trying to figure out how to. Uh, what you wanted to do for your next assignment. Right. You, you knew what you wanted kind of, but you wanted more guidance on it. So you said, let me take 30 days mm -hmm. and do these spiritual exercises, which right. I'm very familiar with um, the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius. I would, I've done uh, weekend retreats and three and four days retreats, but you know, most uh, sort of normal people would mm -hmm. have a hard time with a 30 day, just because it's hard to just take 30 days unless you're on like a teacher on on, on sabbatical right um, so it's really hard to do 30 days but um as a priest i would imagine you know jesus spent you know 40 days in the desert 40 days <laughs> so you know if if it's good enough for him it's good enough for, him, for anybody right right so and we see that even in the old testament there's a lot of people go out and do their you know it's not mm -hmm. just the christian faith right uh, that encourages you to unplug. It's it goes back to the beginning, right? So, yeah. so why did you write this? Because you this, you wrote it just during the pandemic, correct? Right, a year ago, pretty much a year ago. And uh, and uh, but you went several years back on this retreat. So, yeah. So the, the retreat was in 2018. Uh, all of July, basically, except for the 31st. Um, and I think I write that in the book, probably on day 20, where I say, you know what? I think there's a, I, 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 I think I should write a book about this experience, but I didn't know. So I asked my spiritual director, I go, I mean, mind you, I'm, I'm just taking notes. I'm, not, I'm just journaling just for my own self edification. I'm not, I'm not asking the Lord to write a book here. I'm just, just participating in this retreat. Uh, which, by the way, you don't have to be Catholic to go on or Christian. You could just, you know, you could have some type of a, a spiritual book. But um, and he said, yeah, you should do it. And so I did it. 
And I, I jokingly tell everybody, I was so convinced and so convicted to write this book that it took a year, nine months and COVID for me to sit down and actually write it. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and I liked what um, your spiritual director said, to have a good retreat, you have to sleep well, eat well and pray well. Yes. And, uh, and it's funny because it, not that this is, you know, at all about me, but at the beginning of the, the pandemic, I decided that I was going to focus, really focus. I was finishing my book as well. And I decided I wasn't going to drink any alcohol, you know, and a lot of people were like, oh my, that's what, how they were getting through it. But I said that if I, I'm not going to drink any alcohol because I want to feel good physically, because I know that this is the time for me to, to do right. this. So I do like little mini retreats like that. And I think it's so important. So why, you know, what, talk about the phone addiction and why unplugging, even if it's for a full day or for goodness sake, an hour, whatever you do, like tell right. what, why, why is it good for anybody? You know, when you, it's almost like uh, listening to heavy metal rock music, that, that type of frequency agitates the human person. Our technology agitates the human person so badly that cause it's, there's, so, there's so much anxiety with, uh, well, I put something out on, um, on, on, the, on social media and nobody's liking it. I only got 2000 likes instead of a million likes. What's going on with me? And so there's anxiety of instant gratification. Yeah. And so when I turned off my, my uh, electronics and I basically what I had to do is like I mentioned, I think in my forward or my introduction, I had, I, had to, I had to tell everybody on Facebook that I won't see you in a month. I turned, I turned everybody in, on Twitter, sorry, I'll see you in a month. And, um, and I, the human person needs complete silence. I don't know why uh, the creator, uh, God created us that way, but we do. And when we have complete silence and we just allow to just be present, contemplation is literally being present to the divine. It's not conversation. There's meditation, there's vocal prayer, there's mental prayer, but when you have contemplation, it's just being present. And so when you spend 30 days just being present to God and letting him speak to you and just like, here's, here's my ideas, here's what I want you to think about. And I just saw images and, and insights. Like I, I'm, I was like, okay, this is like John, the Book of Revelation style ah. imagery. I'm like going, this is like this is this is not normal. That's why I had I, I said something doesn't seem right. So I said something seems like I should listen. I should actually. Um, uh, I think I should write a book about this because it would seem so unique, and that's kind of why that that quiet when it's silent. And as Italians who are very hyper, I'm a hyper Italian. There are mellow Italians. We know a few of those, uh, but man, I'll tell you. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't really know any real mellow Italian. There's I unfortunately do. Yeah. I, see my mom's side, they're not play time about Aze, So they are, they have some more calmness. My Sicilian side, they're not calm. No, the Sicilians are not calm. No, I don't know. Although when you go there, they're, re they're way more relaxed than I think the American Sicilians. Uh, but there's a lot of, but no matter what, there's a lot of passion there. It's a lot. Yes. Actually, I think it's beautiful because they mm -hmm. have a passion for life. Yes. Real zeal. Yes. I that, do. I, I, you know. That's why I celebrate birthdays. Because I think we should have, we should celebrate life. And I said, birthdays. Absolutely. Is, I have people like, oh, I don't like my birthdays. Like, why? It's life. Yeah. I, I like cake. Well, well, I, yeah, you like cake, but you know, it's, I mean, but even the church, the, if we're going to talk about the Catholic church, I mean, you know, during Lent, you have even Sundays and feast days, are you, you, you are celebrate, supposed, supposed to be celebrating like mm -hmm. all through the year anyway, but it's a yep. celebration. And I know um, in my own Sicilian, my family is from Riesi and the patron saint is Saint San Giuseppe, Saint mm. Joseph. And you know, March 19th is coming and that's a big day for Zeppelis and whatever, all this. The, <laughs> Italy. You know, right? <laughs> and they cel they celebrate it, they celebrate it. And and um, like to, uh, today's, um, it's funny because I talk to Sicily every day and my friend said to me, um, congratulations or agori, happy women's day. Cause today we're celebrating it's national women's day. And, yes. um, and I don't want to forget that because I, I, I know that, uh, it's important. And so I'm going to let divert a little bit because I think uh, I'm going to divert because it is national women's day. And I want you to clear up for everybody. Uh, people think that as Christians, 
um, or any, but, or in any real religion that the men are superior to women. And we know that I know, because I know my faith, that this isn't true. Um, but how would you describe the church view about women? Like, what would you say that the church, the church would teach? Because I know on the, did he, I've read the, on the, right. you know, you know, women. dignity. Yeah. So that's, I think St. John Paul II, you'd have to read that whole document on the dignity of women. Uh, right. But if you look at the, if you actually, if you're just objective, just look at history, objectively speaking, not look at anybody's bias. You look at the Catholic church, actually, uh, uh, the highest uh, highest level for any saint is to be a doctor of the church. We have women who are doctor of the church. They're spiritual giants. Um, the Blessed Mother, <laughs> hello, gave birth to Jesus Christ. She's the most uh, revered female in the in the church. Period. We even have we have churches dedicated to her. And so it, it, I get frustrated when 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 people say uh, that women are not equals. I don't really hear that language anymore. I mean. I'm a, I'm a late boomer, early Gen Xer, so I don't hear that language as much, uh, but apparently that was very, very common before Je Vatican II, and it was unnecessary, and I could see why some of the nuns were frustrated during those times because they were treated that way, and you hear some of the stories that the nuns went through, and it's that part is real. That's part of our history. It's unfortunate, but some of these strong women, Joan of Arc, St. Catherine of Siena, went to the Pope in, in Avion, France, is you need to get the heck out of here and go back to Rome where you belong. I was a little short little nun. No, I've, and he seen left. I've, I've been to Siena. Yeah, yeah, so women have been, I mean, if you go to any Catholic church, 90% of your employees are women. So they are the foundation. They're very, very strong leaders. They have some women who are actually uh, running parishes uh, as, as uh, uh, they call parish life directors. Right. And so it's unfortunate that the bad press, like all priests are, are pedophiles, that's wrong, it's false. All uh, that women are suppressed in the Catholic church. Well, it, in some cases that's true, but it mainly false. Um, I used to, when I was a pastor, that's all I would do is ask women's advice about stuff because that's, they actually have, they have a, they have an intuition that men do not have. Um, uh, I, I do have prophetic gifts, but I, I'm not, in, I'm not intuitive, like something, I, I just know that certain things I have to do, but um, the bad press that the Catholic church gets about women and that all priests are a certain way is, is false. That's actually a lie. It's, it's, it's fake and it's not true. And so I, I, if you, my favorite saints are women and, and some of my favorite saints are men. I mean, I, I just, I, I think the women's contribution to the Catholic church in its history is, is beyond words. St. Helen found all the relics of Jesus crucifixion. She, St. Uh, Constantine, the emperor says, hey mom, go over there. So she went over there, brought everything back. I've actually been to the spot where St. Helen found the, 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 the wood from the cross. I mean, it's right there in the Holy Sepulchre Church. So, I mean, the women have been, unfortunately, didn't get a lot of press. Just like the Holy Spirit doesn't get a lot of press either. And he's one of the persons of the Trinity. So uh, it's unfortunate. Our PR department in the Catholic Church is pretty bad. <laughs> well, there. Well, thank God you're in media. So we can get mm -hmm. you, you know. Yeah. I mean, mamas are always special heart for most Italian boys anyway. So yeah, this is true. Oh, well, this is true. This is true. And, you know, I, I, um. I never felt uh, I never felt less than you know in the church. No. I mean, men men and it goes across the board though. I mean, yeah. people, here's what I would say, and and it, this is kind of important for people to hear. The I think the the reason why people are so hard on the Catholic Church is because there's no matter what no matter what religion you are, everybody sort of looks to Rome to, to say something that, yeah. you know, and sometimes the church doesn't say enough. I, and this I, happens, they keep yeah. quiet because the church is never changing, always growing, but sure. because they're slow to change and slow, mm. and this is why this Pope is fabulous. He's, he's just a great Pope. You know, he's, he's, you know, jumping out of cars to hold babies. So, right. you know, I mean, he's great, mm. but I think um, that people want to hear they want to just, they want somebody to say, I'm sorry, this happened. Mm -hmm. right. And even if you're not even Catholic, because right. you, you have this expectation that the church is going to say, and, but then it goes to the other side. They want the church to let everything go. And it's right. not going to happen that way. But no. at least some of the, 
some of the stuff that happened, you know, and, you know, I, I was just talking about this with somebody the other day, we were talking about how a lot of times the, um, I was talking to a priest once who was laughing about how the nuns were abusive and they was laughing about it. And I go, that's not funny. It's not funny. It's right. why people left the church. Right. So it's not funny. Like, it's not funny that this, that my mother got locked in a closet when she was in first grade. Yeah, that's not funny. It's not funny. And so, um, you know, you, you sort of expect like, somebody to say i'm really sorry that this happened this is it's not that's that's not the joy of god the joy of jesus no. the joy of the holy spirit the joy of love it's right. not and so um and so i want to say this out loud because that's not the intention of the church or any christian church at all it should be based upon love and joy and love of 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 yourself love yourself love the whole and love the people around you Right. You know, I was laughing because I, when I think of abusive nuns, I think of uh, uh, rulers on knuckles. And I can tell you all the funny stories that people have told me about getting hit with erasers <laughs> from, from <laughs> nuns. <laughs> so some of the stories I've heard were hilarious. And they had even a show called Midnight Catechism. So I was laughing at that image in my head, not your mother being locked up in a closet. Well, so no, I, I know, thought, but I think people had that, you know, they, they had that idea and that right. really isn't the joy like when i think of Teresa, no that isn't joyful at all no when i how about like um like the little flower like how sweet and like bernadette and how cute and sweet like just sweet right. sweet and even um and i i think of i'm more of, a, of an avala because she yes. had, she had oh, tough, love her she was tough Teresa mm -hmm. avala was tough but you know you could see her being very loving and and you know right. and i just had a sense of humor um oh yeah the favorite joke my favorite joke of all time you could you could tell if you like about her on the horse oh i know yeah well i you know i want you to know i i said those words to jesus once. i was so mad at him i'm so mad at you i want to call some up i want to call somebody up and talk about you <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So i said i was walking around my room going oh i'm so mad at you i want to i wish i could call somebody up and gossip about you yeah really <laughs> He, he goes like this. You mean you mean your friend here? He gives you the number. <laughs> no, but I mean Teresa Avila. She got she fell off a horse. She got thrown off the horse by the horse, and she said to Jesus, "Is this how you treat your friends? No wonder why you have so few friends." You know. So, <laughs> yeah, this is so. But that's a relationship. Yes, and that's she had a, a she had a close one. Yeah. Oof. So that that's a relationship. So uh, <laughs> now. I, I know you, um, of course, being a Catholic priest, you're, you, a lot of this would be geared towards Catholics, but why do you think really... it's important for everybody to spend time connecting to the divine? You know, <clears throat> and I say this because uh, when I, when I was reading the, when I was reading my retreat experience and my, my first draft, I go, you know, this is not really, yeah, I'm a Catholic priest, but it's not really a Catholic book. And so when you read John Pearson's, uh, who's a, by the way, a Baptist minister in his 70s, and he's a, he, he wrote a little blurb in the back, but I, I'll send you a link for his, his review on, on, I think it was for Amazon. He really says like, you know, I got some serious uh, insights from Father Darren's insights on scripture, because it's really a scripture based. There's not really, a, I mean, really, I, I have to really emphasize, it's not explicitly only for Catholics. It's really an opportunity to read a passage Read a read a document, and then just dive into what the Lord is trying to tell you to what's going on there. And so, uh, in that silence, it's amazing. I, I can't tell you this book. I, I some of the insight. I, I still I'm still shocked to this day. I still have. I'm still, uh, I guess, basking in the graces and the uh, of the joy that I had on that retreat even two and a half years ago, almost three years now. Where I just like ah, every time I read those scripture passages or I see those pictures, I go, oh my gosh, that was such a great. What a beautiful experience I had in that in that one hour, and I had in, and I have like so many in there that just were just so I I don't even know what kind of book to call it. I, I it's almost like the it's almost like the the book of Psalms in the in the scripture because Psalms is such a unique form of literary uh, genre that my book is kind of like that. That's why I use Saint Augustine's Confessions, which is a spiritual autobiography, meets Dante's Divine Comedy, which is you know a journey in in the imagery is off the charts. And I, I and honestly, I don't know where it came from. And it was it was it was I, even like even when I read it now, I was like, where did that come from? <laughs> it's like, I don't know. Well, where. I know. 
I, I say that sometimes when I cook, I go, who cooked this? Is yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, I, I know. I, I, and sometimes when I write, you know, I get that because when I write and I go, oh my God, and I'll be crying about it. And I go, I didn't make this up. Somebody gave this to me. Yeah. You know, to say. So you, I get that. But um, two things I want to say, I'm going to ask you a question about something I just sure. opened up to, but um Oh my God, I've lost my, I've lost my train of thought. I'm so, I'm so, um, excited about this. Yes. Cause Italians are always like, that. I know, I know. Right. Um, so all right, I'm going to skip over that. I'll, 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 it'll come, we'll come back. Um, so you have here one direction was given to meditate on the Satan side versus spirit. Mm. Side of faith. Now yeah. that's, that's interesting because, yeah. um, it's, well, it's a little scary for me being an empath and it's sort of a, you know, someone who, you know, I, I, it makes me nervous, not because I'm, I'm scared. I'm, I, I know the end of the story. So, you know, we, we you know, know who wins, you know, uh, we know the end. Yes. We know who wins. Um, but to actually sort of give attention to the, the evil side of it to me is, yeah. is giving attention to something that, right. you know, so tell me about that. So part of the, uh, the pro there's four weeks in the, in the Ignatius exercises and the weeks are not seven days. It's four movements of the soul. So when you read my book, you'll see, you know, weeks one and two took almost a lot of the retreat and then three and four were like fast. Right. So to, to progress towards looking at yourself in general, what they do is they have you kind of look at the, all the sins you've done in the past in the very beginning and look at the good and evil you've done. And then you go, and then you do, uh, as Catholics, we go to a confession. So you would do what you call a general confession, looking at your whole life. But since I've done that like four times in my life, the, the director goes, you've already done that. We don't, let's not waste time on that. Let's just move on to something else. So <clears throat> when you look at both sides, you actually see that both sides are very active in your life. And that both sides want you to be with them in hell or heaven. So God wants you in heaven and Satan wants you in hell. And you, and you start contemplating that, 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 that cosmic battle <clears throat> and you really start seeing it. And when you look at one of my meditations, uh, what you'll see, I don't, uh, it, my education, my uh, understanding of history and all of a sudden my imagination all took off on that one, um, that one uh, I think it's, I forgot what day it is. It's called the Gmore virus. Uh, you'll see the guy, his name is Ron Richards. Uh, that, that was, that was the most incredible, uh, that was like a full hour of just keep on writing. I don't know where, why I just kept writing and then the thoughts just kept coming to my head. Um, and so, um, now I lost my train of thought now. I'm trying to remember the question again. <laughs> well, oh yeah, Satan side. So yeah, so that's why it's very important because, because there's, there's no such thing as indifference in, in, in this universe. It does not when somebody is personally chooses to be indifferent, that is become that becomes vomit, that becomes spittle, that just becomes the most useless person in the planet because they have they've chosen not to choose a side, and so they want you to choose a side, and they're showing you, and they want you to contemplate both sides, and that's so. What I love about the Ignatius exercises is that it asks a ton of questions, it's giving you an opportunity to freely choose. And it's, up, it's asking you to look at both sides and make your choice. Um, clearly, Ignatius wants you to choose God's side, but, and, and I would choose that as a priest, I want you to choose God's side, but it, it, I want freedom of choice. That's why cults, religious cults are so evil because they take away the freedom of the person and, they, and they, they, they suffocate them and they move them off to the side. They take away from their family and friends. And that's what makes it really difficult. That's why what I love about Christianity and Catholicism, it's very, very free. Hence why we have so many Catholics that leave because they have the freedom to do that. And so I love freedom because it gives you an opportunity, but you have to have knowledge to, to choose freely. You just can't, that's what's so important about knowledge and learning because when you learn and you learn more about uh, both sides, you're like, okay, I can see why God was really going after this side and why this side really hates this side. And so uh, it was really, it was an incredible um, mental gymnastics. My mind was going back and forth, blah, 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 like, like playing tennis. It was driving me crazy. <laughs> well, that's, it. I mean, it's, it, it, it's interesting. I, I don't know really what the benefit would be of um, Satan's side, except he thinks he's in charge, but he loses anyway at the end. But yeah. um, you know, I, so the indifference is very important. That's something that to me, so you're neither hot nor cold, you're lukewarm and I vomit you out of my mouth, which is a, from revelation. Right. And, um, and, and indifference, lukewarm is, is weak. 
Oh. I just, I don't like it. I, it's like, uh, take a stand. Yeah. You know, so I agree. I love that. Um, and, and it's interesting that you had to take, try and get in the, I don't know. Did you try and get in the shoes of Satan saying, <laughs> you know what? There's a, there's a book out called screw tape letters by C.S. Lewis. I know Lewis. that one. Yes. Yeah. So when people read that, then you get an idea of sh the Satan side and then, uh, then the God side. And that's, I, um, C.S. Lewis, right? C.S. Lewis. Did I say C.S. Lewis? I thought I did. Yeah. C.S. Lewis screw tape letters. And, and, um, uh, the, the professor from BC wrote one like it. Um, yeah, uh, uh, Peter Kraft. Yes, he wrote one. He's, I read. He's ridiculously I read brilliant man. Yeah. I'm so jealous of his intellect. <laughs> I wish I was that smart. But, um, I know, I know what I forgot. Um, I I think that people, uh, especially um, other Christian faiths, because this is very scripturally based. Because I was reading when I was reading uh, what John Pearson was saying, uh, they think that Catholics don't know their scripture. And the and um, I think one of the apologetics, one of those guys said they do. It's just they just don't know um, chapter and verse. Yes, so, that's me. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but it, it's very interesting how you can. It is very scripturally based. Everything is the the Ignatius exercises, the you know Catholic Mass, and all of that. So, regardless of what you know what faith you are, that's. You know that's a fallacy. That's that's a non-truth. <laughs> right. Yeah. Another PR problem we have. Right. <laughs> well, we people we don't explain understand it, right? the backstory. They don't understand the backstory. Like the backstories. The back thousand years. Right. But the backstory is also and and um you know back in the day nobody right. had a Bible because it cost three years wages to write, yeah. write it and and they used to chain the Bible to the pulpit because somebody would come in and steal it. Yeah. We have car alarms today because we don't right. have a car stolen. <laughs> right. So that people don't understand the backstory as to the protection yes. of scripture. Yeah. And, and it's sake and it was sacred. So people don't know those stories, which are right. They're very fun stories, like even how yeah. um the the Irish monks um sort of morphed uh confession into what it with what it is today. Yeah, thank God. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> No, I think the Irish are smart in that regard. They that was a smart. That was very smart. Yeah. Well, and they would probably. I'm sorry. I'm going to be nice. Um, but um, you know, uh, I was going to say, you know, we'd all be wearing sackcloth and ashes, standing outside the church, asking for forgiveness and prayers. So. Yeah. Yeah, and being public about our our sins. But people are like, well, but you know, to be honest with you, we still have that uh, tendency to to want to speak about our sins publicly. Hence, uh, Jerry Springer, Ricky Lake, all those type of shows that have you know people coming out showing all the dirty laundry um, uh, that makes good television supposedly, but it really doesn't make a good person. And and so it, it really, um, I, I love the idea of having confession quiet and personal. Right. Well, yeah, absolutely. Um, but I, I mean, people, people like the dirt they want, unfortunately people enjoy pain. I mean, it's like what, like, you know, this is sort of the, um, you know, the, people doing that. It's almost like sitting in the Coliseum watching I, uh, lions eat people, you know, I mean, right. <laughs> yeah. you know, you, yes. or I watch a hockey game and I'm like, oh my God, let the gloves come off. I want them to fight. Right. <laughs> right. So, I mean, we kind of have that tendency, don't we? Yep. Um, so. I want to ask you uh, about physically being in the retreat and having that time away. Yes. You, so physically, you're eating well, you're sleeping well, which feels good. But mm -hmm. what about like the, that first couple of weeks that's really difficult? How did you feel? Like how how were you feeling physically? Was it what you know? I sometimes you get like a little nervous, you get a little shaky and, you know, I'm just wondering how you felt. I was super excited. I've always thought about doing the 30 day retreat was one. Two is this retreat center that I write about in my book, uh, Sedalia, Colorado by ran by the Jesuits, mm -hmm. Sacred Heart. Uh, they do it right. Quiet. Nobody talks to each other. We had 50 people on that retreat. I mean, retreat facility. Nobody talked to each other. I said mass by myself. They had a public mass for those who were lay people like yourself mm -hmm. and sisters and priests. But I decided I wanted to be reclusive. I'm, I'm not really a reclusive. I'm an extrovert. So, but I wanted to dive in, dive in, dive in. So I said, look, I'm not going to talk to anybody. I'm not going to see any. I mean, I'll see people, but I'm not going to talk to anybody. And I didn't for the whole retreat except my spiritual director. 
so I was really relaxed physically. I did take a little nap the first day uh, when I got there that evening. Uh, rela- and then he, he kind of, as you read the book, you see there's not that much meditations the first couple of days. And so uh, I was never nervous. I was super excited. I was really relaxed. Uh, it was really warm. So I got to wear my sandals and shorts and a t-shirt all the time. Uh, it was just, uh, the food was good. Um, it, you, know, you know, it's not, it's, it's, you know, it's retreat food. So, I mean, it was decent. Um, but man, I tell you, uh, just, and then you could even eat outside by yourself and contemplate what you just spent an hour on after I would, I would go to my meditation and go eat lunch. And I just sit there and look outside, look at the birds and just start thinking about the last hour that I was meditating on. And I just absolutely love the quiet and, um, and just the peace. And it just brought when you're a hyper person like myself, peace and quiet's actually, our, it's our Ritalin really. So it just calms us down. And so um, I loved it. I, I just, and I think that people, I mean, who are uh, like introverts find it very difficult to be on a 30 day retreat because that's, they're already quiet. So it's like more of their own lifestyle for, for an extrovert. It's a lot easier I've been told. And I felt that the same thing was really easy. Um, but I didn't feel nervous. Didn't feel intimidated. What I would do though, we had a list of all the people that were there and I would stand by that list. I go, okay, that's probably sister. So-and-so and that's probably sister. That's probably father. So, and I would, I have to connect with people. That's just what I had to do. And I would try to figure out, okay, that's a, that's a couple over there probably. And, and I would sit there and try to figure out who was who. Because right, I just had to do it. You listened to talks, though, did you not? Or was it all no. quiet? No talk. Me, me and God. Because when I did my weekend retreats, we listened. We had to listen to a talk, and then we had time to. But it was a the the it was the Ignatius exercises, but they were talks, right. and then you went. You had like a half an hour after the talk to go and either walk the grounds or right. you know, Atlanta has a really nice retreat. It's Ignatius House up in. Okay. Uh, uh, just slightly north of Atlanta. It's a beaut- on beautiful grounds. It's beautiful. They're all the, yeah. Je- the Jesuits from, um, from uh, New, Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans, yeah. yeah. New Orleans. And so, yeah, I remember, um, oh my gosh, fa- the f- priest who was so funny. And I went in to talk to him for spiritual direction. He goes, sugar, listen to the way you're thinking. You've got to change the way you're thinking, sugar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't talk like that in California. <laughs> yeah, I know. He was awesome. I mean, he was such a beautiful man. Um, But, you know, so let's sort of bring this around before we finish up. And I know we, I put the link to uh, buy the book in this, the description of this video. Appreciate that. So, and it's also in the email. I will put it when, you know, when we post this video everywhere and get it on YouTube and all of that, we'll, we'll make sure that it's the the link. I appreciate that. If anybody's looking to, well, listen, even if you just want to pitch your book, (laughs) <laughs> the I, I I told the I told the artist to go you know that's all that's actually another hour conversation unfortunately right. yeah because you uh, have really lovely pictures in here and um and I got so- an eight year old all the way up to seventy five and here's the funny thing every single decade from zero to 10, 10 20, 30, all the way up to set to eighty I have I have artists from every single decade well this is yeah. funny this kind of looks like a cross between Arnold Schwarzenegger and, and Satan. Yes, and that's when back. you read the meditation. When you read the meditation, you'll understand why. So yeah. yeah. So, uh, but, so it, and it, by the way, the the uh, the, the one that you showed before with me, the Jesus and the microphone, and me and yes. Jesus talking. That that's the same artist. Oh really? Yeah. So I must have a. It's just my the the attra- certain attraction. Uh, yeah, because yeah, I love this. I love this one with the microphone. Um, maybe he'll come be on my show. And yes. um, so, <laughs> but uh, so let's just sort of wrap it up and say, you know, let's talk about maybe give three reasons why, three reasons why everyone should spend a certain amount of time unplugged, unhooked, you know, that's it, quiet, but you have to quiet your mind. It's not just, cause you could sit there. I could sit here and think about everything else. I could talk right. about how I'm going to empty my dishwasher, the, the laundry and you know, everything else. Talk about that. I, I don't, I can't give you the science behind it. I just remember hearing the science at a talk about turning off, like not even watching your phone before you go to bed because your brain and it, it affects your brain. Um, and it has to be at least a half hour before you go to bed. Uh, there's benefits to that. Um, you can actually hear your thoughts when you're in silence and you get better ideas. Do you find out how creative you really are? People say, well, I'm not creative. Yeah, you actually are. Improv comedy. 
is done by listening right. to the other person. When you follow the rules of improv comedy, you find they're very, very uh, uh, Christian centered. Um, uh, the other thing too is uh, when you're that quiet, your body calms down. And I think it brings down your, uh, they were talking about your blood pressure, um, your uh, anxiety, everything kind of just gets lowered when you are silent and these and the, i mean obviously we're on technology and we want people to watch this but ultimately you have to fast i call it media fast as well mm -hmm. uh pick a you know pick a day uh a, you know uh, an, a day a week if you can just like no media nothing nada I, I haven't done it yet except for those 30 days and so but if i were to do that right now and just like you know what i'm done i'm not, i'm just i might just take pictures i'm but that's about it uh or just 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 shut it down and go back to the days before technology because the human body was not created for technology for the for the long like for the 24 7 like well that's I, one i think as much as it brings people together it separates people yes because now we're not getting used to being around people no, we're we, the yeah. social distancing actually the best answer the best way we should say it's physical distancing but right now uh we should need we need to be in people's presence and so you might be physically distanced but be yeah physically present so i think that's why it's your turn off uh, turn off and let uh, so you turn off because your body needs it you need it to be cool uh, i think that you have to turn off so you can um listen to the god and third is that um it, allow your 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 creative mind to to you know contemplate various things that the lord wants to talk to you about and that's and when you have a scripture passage like a lexio to be in a little reading to give you imagination Boy, I tell you, and, it, and I have a, actually a strong imagination and creativity. Um, I'm like a 99 percenter uh, percentile for create for imagination. That's why when you read my book, you're like, okay, this guy, what was he smoking? But I wasn't. <laughs> um, but well, I think you have to tap into that. So um, I'd like to say one thing because I uh, Pope John Paul II, Saint Saint um, Paul, whatever. Saint Johnny. Saint yeah. John, yeah, Saint John Paul. Um, he wrote a whole encyclical on freedom and, you know, in, in when, anytime you're addicted to anything, you're not free. Right. And so you can't, there's no love without freedom. Right. And when, when you make choices, when we make choices that don't serve a higher good, we become a slave to those choices. Yes. Yes. And when you are a slave, you are no longer free. That's and right. so, and this is actually, you know, a way to free up, free yourself. You know, because all of this stuff becomes addiction, food, sex, drugs, rock and roll, right? And, you know, and technology, right? <laughs> right? So, uh, one worse. last question before we go sure. What'd you give up for Lent? I didn't give up anything. What I'm doing is a uh, this this thing called the, uh, the divine office. I'm getting back in the habit of doing those prayers again. And, and there was also a, a surrender novena by Father Dolino. Uh, it's called the surrender prayer so i'm starting to do that as well so that's good so you were more. more proactive i'm very proactive on this that's one. nice so i did coffee once never again <laughs> oh oh my gosh yeah no that's that's not good so okay well i loved having you here uh will you come Thank back you. I, it, you i will come back for you anytime yeah. if you want to do it every day every week <laughs> I, i'm up totally I love uh, talking to you stephanie i just oh, uh, I just love you. it yes yeah, it's, it, it's, this is fun it is. this is fun for me um, yeah, and I so, mean, if your if your if your followers want to get a hold of me, they can go to a CatholicMediaMissionaries.com. Uh, I don't know how you put that on your notes, but CatholicMediaMissionaries.com. There's, I think, there's uh, some email there, and there's a phone number there, um, so you can call that, or if they want to get a hold of me, um, yeah. And so, yeah. So, um, um, let's. Um, how about a, a blessing for everybody that's watching? All right. All right. Well, for all of those people out there who are watching, may God bless you this day and have you have a holy life and that you have peace and prosperity, whatever you do in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Right. Thank you. Love you guys. God, thank you, Stephanie, so much. I look forward to yes. talking to you soon. Thanks for tuning in to The Just Steph Show. I really care about you, your happiness, and helping you make great choices for your life. So tune in next week for more wisdom from me. In the meantime, follow me on my Just Steph Facebook page, on Twitter at Steph Palermo, my Instagram account is Just Steph One, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Steph Palermo. See you next week. Ciao, ciao, baby.